Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problem out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. We are almost almost done with solving all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, any math problem at all that gives you difficulty, you can find the solutions to it from day number 251 through 400. The problems that this book contains, the second edition, are all almost the same problems and in most cases exactly on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. And we are done with solving all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are this book here, the 10th edition of the GRE general test, the old, the old exam. Because the books that I just showed you, the revised GRE, they do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions. So for practice purposes, we have started doing some quantitative comparison questions out of this book from day number 401. Right now we are on page number 200. Let's turn to it. Page number 200. Question number 13 is what we are about to do. As soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, make sure you pause the video and you solve the problem yourself. And then, and then continue watching and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Number 13. Number 13 when it appeared in the exam, 62% of people got it right almost 40%, 38% missed it. We are told that we have a circle uh, with center with center O. With center O and radius 1. So here is our circle. We have a, here is center O. Here is the center O. And we are told that it has a radius of 1. So far so good. And then they should go on to show us the shaded region. As a matter of fact, I should show, I should, I should draw the shaded region exactly the way it appears. It appears something like this. And they go on to tell us that this is 90 degrees. And this is the shaded region. So they want us to compare the shaded region, the area of shaded region in column A versus pi over 2. It's a pretty straightforward, simple problem. First thing first, before we worry about before we worry about the area of the shaded region, let's first find the area of the whole circle. Area of the whole circle, as we know, is pi r squared. Pi r squared. But r from here to here is the radius, which we are told is one. The radius is one, so it's simply pi times one squared, which boils down to just pi. The shaded region that they're showing here has a little symbol here which tells us that this is 90 degrees. This portion is 90 degrees. Well, if it's 90 degree slice, if this slice is 90 degrees, that's a fourth of a circle, because 90 times 4 is 360. It's a fourth of a circle. So the area of the shaded region is simply one-fourth of that. The area of the shaded region is simply, area of the circle is pi, area of the shaded region is just one-fourth of that, pi over 2, uh, pi over 4. And we are being asked to compare pi over 4 versus pi over 2. Here we have some number pi, which is being divided by into four parts, here is two parts, obviously pi over pi over four is going to be less than pi over two. The answer is B. That's all it is, that's how simple it is. Let's go on to the next one, number 14, the penultimate one. Number 14, we're done with this one. Number 14, the percentage drops from all the way from 62% to 24%. It's very important that you pause the video immediately and do this problem yourself. Here's what we are told. We are told that the sum of the lengths, sum of the lengths of two sides of an isosceles triangle is 7. Sum of the length of two sides of an isosceles triangle is 7. This is this is triangle here. I'm being lazy here. This is triangle. We are told that one side 
one side, one of the sides, one of the sides one side of the triangle has length 4. We are told that one of the three sides of the triangle happens to be 4. And here is the question. We are being asked to compare the perimeter of the triangle that they are talking about versus, versus 11. Versus 11. That's all it is. That's how simple it is. That's how straightforward it is. Pause the video. I insist that you pause the video. You do the problem yourself and then unpause it and then compare your work against the work we'll do together. I'll give you two seconds to unpause and pause. So let's get going. The well, first thing we have to understand is that we are told that the triangle that we are dealing with is an isosceles triangle which means two sides of the triangle have to be equal. Two sides of the triangle have to be equal. It doesn't matter which two sides, just for, for simplicity we talk about these two sides. And we are told that the sum, sum of two of the sides is seven. We are also told that one of the sides is four. One of the sides is four. So for example if this side is four, before we go anywhere at all, if that side is four, then because of the fact that these two sides are equal, because of the fact that it's an isosceles triangle, if you're going to call this side four, this side will also have to be four. But we also told that one of the sides has a, we, we also told that the sum of the two sides is seven. These are two sides already, which means the remaining side has to be three, has to be three, because the sum of the two sides, sum of two sides, any two sides, sum of any two sides in a triangle has to add up to seven, right here. The two sides have to add up to 7. Sum of the length of two sides of the isosceles triangle is 7. One of the sides is 4. There you go. It turns out that the fact that the other side is also 4 is irrelevant here. The point is one of the sides of the triangle here is 4. Other side is 3. Here we have two sides 4 and 3 and therefore the sum of the two sides is 7. What's the perimeter of this guy? The perimeter of this guy, the perimeter of this guy is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 3. 4 plus 4 plus 3 is 11. So the perimeter of this guy is 11 and we're being asked to compare it against 11. 11 versus 11, the answer is C. Now, the reason why the percentile is so low here, three quarters of the people miss this question, is because they stop right here. That's it, they're done. No. This answer here, actually I should not have done what I just did here. When I put a question in a box and put a star next to it, that's my way of saying it's the final answer. That's not, that's not what I meant to do here. This is, this is what I meant to do here. C with a circle on it. Circle. This, is, this, this, would have been, this would have meant, with the box and the star, would have meant that it's the final answer. The answer here, in this scenario, this is 11 and this is 11, the answer here is C. Now what does that C tell us? Let's take, a, let's take a very quick quick look at it. I don't want to turn it into a long, I don't want to turn it into a long sermon. But let's go through very quickly the four answer choices that we have in the quantitative comparison question, quantitative comparison question, what is it that you claim when you pick answer choice A? When we pick answer choice A, what we're claiming is that the, answer, that the quantity in column A is always greater. Don't leave out that word always. When we pick answer choice B, what we're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always greater. And when we pick answer choice C for the question, what we're making, the claim that we're making here is that the two quantities are always, always, and always equal. When we find a scenario where the answer choice turns out to be C, it does not mean that this answer is C. It does not tell us that the answer is C. What this tells us, the work that we have done so far, what it tells us is that, that the answer cannot be A. Answer cannot be A for this question because A would have meant that the two quantities are always equal and of course two quantities could not very well be always equal because we have found one instance where they are not. It also tells us that the answer cannot be, or oh, I, I meant to say, uh, the answer cannot be, let me start again, the answer cannot be A because A would have meant that the quantity in column A, A would have meant that the quantity in column A is always greater. Quantity in column A cannot be always greater when we have found one instance when they are equal. Similarly, the answer here cannot be B because B would have meant that the quantity in column B is always greater. The quantity in column B could bloody well not be always greater if we have found one instance when it is not. Here they are equal to each other. It rules out B. The answer is either C or D. What we have to do now is to make sure that we cover all our bases, make sure that we think about all the different scenarios and, and, and make sure that we are, we, are, we are correct in our claim that these two quantities are always equal. Can you think of any other scenario? Any other scenario where we fulfill the conditions? The conditions are that the sum of the two sides has to be 7. 
one of the side has to be, some of the two sides has to be seven, one of the side has to be four. It's very straightforward. What we have to do here is to think about another triangle where instead of putting a four and a four here, maybe, maybe the four sits down here and these two sides are equal. So one side is four, since the sum of the two sides has to be seven, one of the sides has to be three. Now as soon as, soon as we put a three here, some of the two sides here is seven, some of the two sides is seven, it says here, yes, sum of the length of the two sides, sum of the length of the two sides of an isosceles triangle is seven. Three plus four is seven. It also says one of the side is four, right here, one of the side is four. As soon as we put a three here, this one would also have to be three, because there is an isosceles triangle. And now, in this scenario, the perimeter happens to be, in this scenario, let's keep the two separate. In this scenario, the perimeter happens to be 3 plus 3 plus 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. Now the answer, now it is 10. Now we are dealing with, earlier, we, were, we had a, we had a 11 versus 11. Now we have, now we have, the, now the perimeter is 10, and we are looking at 10 versus 11. This is column A, this is column B. And now in this scenario, the answer is, answer is B. Before the answer was C. Before the answer was C, now the answer is B. Because of the fact that we have conflicting answer, the correct answer to this problem is D. That's it. What I want you to do right now, what I want you to do right now is to play a little game here. And you have to promise me that you're not going to uh, go, go forward and watch the rest of the video until you have done exactly what I tell you to do, no matter how long it takes. Here's the question. The question is, are these two the only two possibilities? Are these two are the only two uh, only two scenarios possible here? The answer is no. There is one more triangle that is possible where the two sides will add up to seven, and one of the sides will have to be will be four. What I want you to do is pause the video, and think of that third possible scenario that exists. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. We have conflicting answer. Since we have conflicting answer here, the parameter was eleven. Here, the parameter is ten. We are comparing it against eleven. When the parameter is eleven, eleven versus eleven is answer C. 10 versus 11, the answer is B. As far as the exam is concerned, there, because of the fact that we have conflicting answer, the correct answer is D. We are done. The third scenario is just for learning purposes. Do you understand? Just, just to tease you. Do you understand? Just to have some fun. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, and then I'll tell you the third scenario. There we go. The third scenario would be, where can we do it? Let's do it up here. Here's the third scenario. The third scenario again. We need a triangle where one of the side has to be four. That part is given. One of the side has to be four. We also told that the sum of the two sides, sum of the two sides has to be seven. How, how can we make the sum of the two sides to be seven and still make it an isosceles triangle? Well, that's very simple. Take your seven and cut it in half. Three and a half and three and a half. Voila. This side is three and a half, this side is three and a half. Three and a half times uh, three and a half plus three and a half is seven. Some of the two sides is seven, one of the side is four. It's an isosceles triangle. And here, it's not going to change anything. It's still, it's seven plus four is eleven. It's the same scenario as this one. It doesn't change anything. But I wanted to make sure that you're able to see here, they are able to appreciate it, that this is not the, this is not the whole st story. There also exists this area. Uh, there, there, there also exists this possibility. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.